Hi there, I'm Mickey Mancus, and welcome to Out the Back Door. It's almost winter, so I'm going to make elderberry syrup. Come along and join me. What usually happens when winter comes around? Cold and flu season. And so I like to have elderberry syrup on hand so that um, it helps boost up my immune system when I start feeling a little punky. And I'm going to show you a little bit of a different method, um, the way that I make it, so that you don't have to cook this down so much. I'm starting with organic dried elderberries. They're easy to find. You can get them in any of your types of co-ops online. And also, I'm going to be using rose hips that I've gone out and foraged and dried because I enjoy using these in a lot of different things. The elderberries are very high in vitamin C, K, potassium, and calcium. The rose hips are extremely high in vitamin C, and that's why I'm going to add these into the mixture also. Plus, this has a little bit of a fruity taste, so it'll complement the elderberries. I'm also going to be using some ginger. You can use dried if you'd like, the powdered form or in chunks. Um, I just happen to have fresh. I'm also going to be using cinnamon sticks in it. You can use powdered cinnamon if you like also. But I'm just going to show you the way that I put it together. So the first thing I'm going to start with is two cups of my dried elderberries. And then I'm also going to add one cup of the rose hips. Now, um, I make rose hip jelly, and I know some people go through the process of trying to crush these, remove the seeds, and all that. Actually, got the idea of adding the rose hips to this to give it an additional bump of vitamin C from Mary at Mary's Nest. If you want to check out her channel. Um, but she crushes hers. I don't. But I'm going to add one cup. And if you don't have access to rose bushes to pick rose hips and foraging, that type thing like I do, they're very easy to find also. Um, you can order them online or, like I said, in the cooperative stores. Natural food stores usually have them. Um, it is less expensive to buy the whole than the crushed. Why, I don't know, because it doesn't take much to crush them if you want to do that. So I've got two cups of the um, dried elderberries, one cup of the rose hips, and next I am going to add one, it's three inch, about a three inch stick of cinnamon. Just going to throw that in there. What we're going to be doing is making a decoction, also known as tea. I've already cleaned up this ginger, and I'm not going to bother peeling it because we are going to strain all of this. And I like ginger. I like mine a little bit hotter, spicier, because ginger has a warming property to it. So let's see. Oh, I think, yeah. I said I like ginger. I'm going to chop up the rest here and put that in. All right. Next, I'm going to add six cups of water. Um, please don't use tap water. Use a filtered water, spring water. Um, we have well water. And the reason I'm saying that is because your end product is only going to be as good as the products that you're putting in to begin with. You don't want to be adding chlorine and fluoride to your healthy elderberry syrup. Okay, I've got all this mixed up right now, and I'm going to put this on the heat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to a boil. Once it comes up to a boil, I'm actually going to put a cover on it, and I'm going to let it simmer for 20 minutes. I just removed my pot with the elderberries. Um, the decoction of tea in here it had been simmering for 20 minutes with the cover on, and I'm going to let it sit here for another hour just to steep and pull all those wonderful flavors out of the berries um, and the rose hips. 
A couple of things I'd like to mention about the elderberry syrup. This is not a cure-all. It will help boost up the immune system because of the content of vitamin C in it, but it's not going to cure any type of a flu bug or anything like that. Another thing I want to mention about the elderberries, do not consume these raw ever. You could get sick. They need to be cooked. If you do have access to fresh elderberries, don't just start eating them because it could cause stomach cramps, diarrhea, that type of thing. Also, elderberries, they belong to the honeysuckle family. So if you have an allergy to honeysuckles, do not consume elderberry. Another thing with elderberry is if you are going through chemotherapy, um, I realize you're trying to boost up your immune system, but they may uh, react with your chemo and actually exacerbate it some. So you don't want to consume elderberries if you're going through chemotherapy. Another thing about the elderberries is it, there is such a thing, too much of a good thing. So don't overconsume this if you're not feeling well or as a precursor to um, if the flu bug is going around. We're talking respiratory flu. And because if you do actually consume too much, it will actually overstimulate your immune system, which could turn around in the end and end up causing more problems. So don't think that if a little bit is good, a lot is great, because that's not the case with this. Studies have also been done that elderberry may also help lower blood sugar. If you have an issue with low blood sugar normally, you probably want to avoid the elderberries also. I want to talk a little bit about the sweetener. Um, I'm going to choose to use raw honey. Um, the reasoning for this is because it's antibacterial, antiviral, antifungus. Um, it works in so many different ways. It's anti-inflammatory. It has a lot of great properties in it. So this is what I'm going to be using in my elderberry syrup today. If you want to use sugar, that's fine. I'm also going to make mine shelf stable so I don't have to refrigerate it. You don't need to do this. If you want to make it to keep in the refrigerator, all you need to do is whatever sweetener you are choosing, you're going to use 50% into the amount of juice that we're going to strain out. So for example, if, um, if you have two cups of our tea, um, you are going to put one cup of your sweetener in, whether it's honey or sugar. I suppose you could use maple syrup too if you wanted. But um, like I said, I am choosing to use honey. As long as I'm making mine shelf stable, I have to put more sweetener in mine. So I am going to use 75% of honey into my tea. If I have four cups of my tea, strained out, I'm going to be using three cups of honey in it. And I realize this sounds like a huge strong amount and I'm always saying I don't eat a lot of sweet stuff. I always cut back on my sweetener. But I want to be able to make this shelf stable. So I do need to have a higher content of sugar in it to help stabilize it. If you don't have enough sweetener in there, you do run the risk of mold growing. Another thing about honey versus sugar, if you're going to use it in here once we strain this, we need the temperature of our tea, our decoction, to be at least 100 degrees or less before we introduce our honey into it, because otherwise we're going to kill off all the good properties in the honey. If that's not an issue to you, go ahead. But I mean, why else would you put raw honey in there? So if you're just adding sugar, you can do it immediately once it's strained, but I'm going to have to let this cool down a little bit more. All right, um, our decoction tea has been steeping for one hour. Um, I've got a stainless steel bowl. Um, I've got a mesh sieve here. And what I'm going to do is just place a cloth dish towel over here, one of them that I use a lot in my making jellies and such. Um, you can use cheesecloth, that'll work also. In fact, I don't even need it. I'm only going to have like two layers in there and I usually get them damp because I don't want my liquid wicking up the dry cloth. I want this dripping in right away. All right. So I'm going to dump everything into my bowl through the sieve. Ooh. I'm 
Let's spoon the rest of this in here. Oh, it smells so good. Huh. Okay, now that I've got that all in there. Now this is kind of hot. You can let it cool down a little bit more. Um, I'm going to squeeze the excess juice out of here, the excess tea. So I get every bit of that goodness. I know some people would um, throw this away into the compost then. Um, I'm actually going to set this on my dehydrator. I'm going to use one of like my fruit leather trays and dehydrate this so it's dried up again. I am going to use that um, for tea. I don't know how much flavor I'll be able to really extract out of it, but there's got to still be some flavor left in here and I don't want to throw it away. Just be forewarned, um, this will stain your hands. <laughs> um, so if that's a concern, you can put on um, nitrile gloves, latex gloves, whatever, in order to do this. All right. Um, this is still pretty warm. I'm going to measure it out though, just so that I have an idea of how much honey I need to start measuring out while this is cooling down. And like I said, being at stains, hopefully I won't splatter. All right. So even though I put six cups of water in with the elderberries and the rose hips, um, I was able to get four cups of liquid. So what I'm going to have to do next then is I'll put three cups of the raw honey in. So I'll start measuring that out. The honey that I buy is extremely thick. Another note about honey. You do not want to give honey to children that are one year old or younger. Now, as far as the dosage of the elderberry syrup, like I said, you don't want too much of a good thing. So I don't take this as a preventative medicine ahead of time. I take this when I feel the onset of like the cold sniffles, that type of thing coming on. And the recommended dosage for an adult would be um, a teaspoon four times a day. And for children, um, that would be two times a day, one teaspoon, two times a day for children. And like I mentioned, remember, if you're using honey, do not give this to infants. Um, if you're using sugar, then you'd be able to. You're also going to only take this for five days and then give your body a rest from it. Because like I said, you don't want to overstimulate your immune system because that can backfire on you. I had checked the temperature on my um, tea and it was still like 120 degrees and being I'm going to put the honey into it, I didn't want that happening. Um, so while that was, while it's cooling down, um, I went and I emptied out my flour sack towel and I've put the elderberries and rose hips that had actually made the tea onto a couple of dehydrating trays um, that I would use for making fruit leathers. Okay, I'm just under 100 degrees. So I am going to start putting in my honey. It needs a little help. <laughs> okay, this is my third cup. And there's nothing wrong with this um, honey. This is the way I get it when I buy it in the eight pound tubs. So now I'm going to gently, so I don't splatter, keep mixing this honey in. And like I said, I'm making mine shelf stable and that is why I put 75% sweetener into my tea here. Um, you do not have to do this. If you're gonna refrigerate it, just put 50%. So if you ended up making um, four cups of the tea, the decoction, like I did, all you would have to do is put in two cups of your sweetener. Um, besides taking just a teaspoon of this, um, kind of like 
cough medicine. You can add like a teaspoon of this to hot water and make a tea out of it. Just make sure that your water isn't over 100 degrees then um, if you're using raw honey in it, that's all. So by doing it this method, you've got a good concentration um, from the elderberries and the rose hips. And we didn't have to cook it down longer to evaporate um, some of the water off of it in order to make it concentrated. Nothing wrong with doing it that method. This is kind of like one ounce of the elderberries per four ounces of water. Um, some people will do like one ounce of elderberry to 16 ounces of water, which is fine also. Um, the only difference is once you've strained it out, you'd have to put this back on the stove top and simmer it um, to reduce the amount of liquid so it's more of a concentrate. I save glass bottles and jars because I repurpose them. These used to be maple syrup bottles, and I'm going to use these to put my elderberry syrup in. I'm also going to use my little stainless steel pitcher right now to scoop some of it up because I know for sure if I try to use the bowl to dump into this I would have a mess all over the place so I like to make things shelf stable as much as possible um, just for the fact that it doesn't take up excess room in the freezer, refrigerator, that type of thing. Um, also, in case the power goes out. All right, looks like I'm going to have um, a nice amount for this season. Uh, I probably won't have to make any more. I hope I don't have to make any more than that. But I do know some people are starting to get the sniffles already. So I thought, oh, the weather's getting cold. It's that time of year. It's I just figured, well, this is a good time then to get this made so I'm not scrambling at the last minute if I start feeling a little under the weather. All right, our elderberry syrup is all finished. We've got it bottled up and everything. If you did do the 50% sugar, um, now would be the time you can put it in the refrigerator and use it when needed. I am going to keep one out on the counter here just in case I feel punky, hopefully not. Um, I can start using this, otherwise I'm going to store it in my pantry. If you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell and give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.